What is gravy everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Following the rather spectacle reveal that God of War Ragnarok is indeed going to launch in November, it got me thinking about all of the great games, and therefore great platinums, that are yet to release this year. It is only July, don't forget. So I decided to sit down with you guys and go through 7 platinum trophies still to come in 2022. Now for the purposes of this list I will be going in order of release date, as of recording this video, none of these games have been pushed back. Forspoken was going to make it onto this list, but it has now been delayed into 2023, so we're just going to have to deal with it. But as always, if you're going to enjoy this video, then please do smack that like button, and if you're new, consider subscribing. Now let's get to it. I mean, you get to play as a cat. What more could you want? Okay, I know that's not really enough of a reason for many people to actually sink the time to get a platinum trophy, but developer Blue 12 Studio knew exactly what they were doing when they decided to make Stray. Set in the neon lit alleys of a decaying cyber city, this third feline adventure game tasks you with navigating both high and low in order to find a way out. You won't be alone in this adventure though, as our titular Moggy will be teaming up with a small yet versatile drone companion named B12 which I'm now realising is the name of the studio. Not much is known about the plot, or what happened to humanity as a matter of fact. The world around you is solely inhabited by androids that at times actually seem quite frightened of our kitty protagonist. Not entirely sure what could have them soiling their tin cans, but it'll be interesting to find out. In terms of gameplay, you're a cat. You do cat things. You knock stuff over because it's annoying, but you get away with it because you have the puss and boots eyes. There also appears to be combat, as well as a decent amount of sneaking and stealth, like some sort of little ginger vigilante. Needless to say, I am anticipating sinking many an hour into this absolute gem when it launches on July 19th. Oh, and if you're on PS Plus Tier 2 and above, you have access to Stray Day 1. Who could say no to that? Now, I anticipate that I'm in the minority here of people who are actually excited for the Saints Row reboot, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Just at least hear me out. I used to obsess over these games back on the PS3. Saints Row 2 in particular was a game that I sank so many hours into, replaying missions and building my criminal empire from the ground up. To me, it filled the void left by GTA during the seventh generation. I never got into GTA 4, sue me. But by the time Saints Row 4 hit shelves, it had seriously gone too far, in my opinion. The addition of superpowers rendered many aspects of the game pointless. It also made a lot of the licensed music redundant, because who the hell's going to drive when you can just fly off? And whilst I understand that they were leaning as far into the wacky as possible in order to make a space for themselves alongside GTA 5, it really just wasn't the same. So when Volition announced that they were rebooting the franchise in a new location with a new cast of characters, I was all for it. Are the characters all douchebags? Yes, probably. But so were all of the original ones. You can't sit there and tell me that Johnny Gout was not an absolute bellend. But at its core, the game looks fun. And isn't that all it needs to do? It looks like it strikes the right balance between GTA and Just Cause, with some dodgy ass humour and some really nutty customization options. And to me, that is Saints Row. So, bring it on. Okay, so, yeah. I'm a massive sucker. I get it. We all knew this remake was coming. For well over a year, the rumour mill has been churning out tidbits and stirring the metaphorical pot with news of an impending release. And, if I'm being totally honest with you, None of it had me excited. I wasn't fussed. I was not bothered about a remake for The Last of Us. I was firmly on the side of, it doesn't need one, it's not been that long. Then I saw it, and holy sugar pills does the difference hit you in the face like a truck. This is not a simple remaster like the PS4. This is a full on remake that brings one of the best stories of the PS3 generation onto modern hardware in the best way possible. Say what you will about The Last of Us 2, and many people have, but bringing the original one up to that same graphical level with improved gameplay elements has me so freaking excited. I'm also going to assume with this upgrade that because Naughty Dog are working on a standalone factions multiplayer mode, there will be no multiplayer trophies in this. 
which means the Platinum might not be quite as daunting as the original. And I know I said in the past that I would never go back to Platinum The Last of Us because I would have to use a collectible guide and it would ruin some of the experience for me, but if I'm having to play through this game again anyway, I might as well. Is the price too steep? Yes. Charging £70 for a remake of a PS3 game that already has a PS4 version is extortionate, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be incredible and I'm absolutely looking forward to jumping back into this when it drops in September. One of the lesser known games on this list, and one that I myself have flitted in and out of love with since its announcement, Steel Rising is a Souls-like title set in revolutionary France. You play as Aegis, an automaton that dares to take on the mechanical army of Louis XVI in order to ensure the revolution succeeds. So in essence, Bloodborne in France with robots. Now like I said, my opinion has gone back and forth on this game. Initially I thought the setting of the game looked incredible and the premise was one that really got me on board, but then they released the first gameplay and that thing started to look a bit rough. The animations didn't look quite right and the soundscape felt very empty. Cut to now however, and having watched IGN's video detailing their hands on with the game and hearing some of the developer comments talking about the game's various mechanics and I am fully back on board. The combat sounds exciting and fluid, even if some of the animations are purposefully stiff due to the mechanical nature of the character, and the world building looks sublime. I cannot wait to jump into this game. Right, last three games are all sequels, so sequel hope. Kicking off our season of seconds with A Plague Tale Requiem, the follow-up to 2019's Innocence, and a game that I have been looking forward to for what feels like years at this point. The first game is one that initially caught me off guard and made me bounce off it, but after going back to get the Platinum Trophy last year, I can safely say it cemented itself as one of my all-time favourite PS4 titles. So naturally I want to do the same with the sequel. Building on the themes of the first game, Requiem paints a picture of a protagonist that has finally snapped and thrown their innocence out of the window. Amicia and Hugo return and are on their way to an island that is supposedly a safe haven where they can rest and recover after having run from the Inquisition for so long, plus all of the stuff that happened at the end. <laughs> However, as you can deduce, it is not all sunshine and kittens and things actually seem to be getting slightly more brutal this time, especially when it comes to Amicia. In A Playtale Innocence, the focus is very much on stealth and using both light and sound to your advantage navigating through the world. Combat in the first game essentially is one giant puzzle that needs to be solved. However, in Requiem, those boundaries do appear to have been pushed back to allow for a much more aggressive approach. You now have access to a crossbow instead of just a sling, meaning that should you wish you can take the fight to the enemies, and being caught by said enemies is no longer an instant game over, thanks to a The Last of Us style shiv mechanic. As for the trophy list, I can only imagine it will follow similar lines to that of the first game, with collectibles and missable trophies throughout, but I would like to see this be a bit more refined in the sequel, maybe providing access to enough upgrade materials in one playthrough for all of Amicia's gear, or taking advantage of some of the brand new combat mechanics for some interesting takedown trophies. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But not for long, because it's coming out in October. Alright, so I get it. Call of Duty, how dare I be excited? But I am, because Modern Warfare's 2019 reboot was one of my favourite Platinums ever. Playing through the campaign and getting the optional objectives on the hardest difficulty was incredibly fun and I will not apologise for that. Obviously the gameplay is going to be solid, I mean it's Call of Duty, that's rarely a problem for them, but as long as they can bring it with the campaign like they did for the 2019 reboot, then I'm absolutely sold. And from what we've seen of the tanker level, I'm going to hazard a guess and say that the campaign is not going to be an issue in the slightest. One thing I would like to see, in terms of the trophies at least, is a bit more emphasis on the miscellaneous ones. They really were what made the first game so much fun. Having to go through clean house using only one bullet per threat, or having to clear out every enemy in going dark without being spotted, those were what made this Platinum such a good time, and all I want from the sequel is more of that. Oh god, come on, how could I not be hyped for this? God of War 2018 was one of my proudest 
platinum trophies. And we finally have a release date for the sequel. Not only a sequel, mind you, but the end of an adventure. Because if you somehow didn't know, the team at Santa Monica have confirmed that Ragnarok will be the end of the Norse storyline, as it should be. From what we've seen of the game so far, it's pretty clear that a lot of what made the previous entry so good has been carried over. The combat still looks insane, and the world, now covered in ice and frost, is just as fantastical as ever. I just hope to Kratos that all of Odin's ravens haven't respawned in the time we've been away. The thing that's got me the most excited though, is that presumably we are going to be visiting the rest of the Nine Realms. This, in my mind, is the ideal way to do an open world. Give us one larger hub area with some important story significance, and then fold in some separate, smaller, segmented areas that are a bit more linear, but provide some much needed diversity. Is this so much to ask? When it comes to trophies, I really don't have a lot to add. Even if they put in twice as many collectibles, I'd still probably do it. Although, please don't do that. All I will say is I hope they don't make us run through Niflheim again because that area can get in the bin. Anyway, we won't have long to wait as it is finally confirmed to be releasing on November 9th. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Let me know down below what games you're looking forward to getting the Platinums in before the end of the year. If you want to talk more about games, then I'm part of a wonderful Discord server. Head over to at the Platpad on Twitter for all of the juicy details. If you want to watch another video, then there is more of my nonsense right over there. As always, I have been Pete, and I shall catch you all next time.